In this video, you'll learn about five direct ways that insulin resistance causes high blood pressure and contributes to heart disease. If you've been eating low fat, low cholesterol foods and still have a high blood pressure of 130 over 85 or higher, or if you're taking a pill to lower your blood pressure, this episode is for you. Are you fatter and sicker than when you started eating low fat and low cholesterol foods? It can be really discouraging to be thinking that you're eating healthy and realize that the advice that you've been following was ineffective all along. Once you understand it's actually elevated insulin and insulin resistance that causes high blood pressure and heart disease, your nutrition strategy changes drastically. This means a shift from eating low fat and low calorie to eating and living in a way that keeps insulin and inflammation low. Things that were once considered bad because they raised bad cholesterol are no longer off limits. And those low fat yogurts, granolas, and cereals that you thought were healthy, you view differently because of the added sugar that raises insulin. This is a complete paradigm shift for most people, but it's essential to grasp for your future health. High blood pressure is a big risk factor for heart attacks, strokes, and heart failure. It's important to keep your blood pressure in a healthy range to reduce your risk for these events. To appreciate how high insulin can increase blood pressure, let's quickly review what blood pressure actually is. Your blood pressure is your cardiac output times your PVR, which stands for peripheral vascular resistance. That's a fancy way of saying how flexible your blood vessels are. So think about blowing up a balloon. It's a lot harder to blow it up the first time because it's stiffer. That's like having a high resistance in your blood vessels. But after you've blown the balloon up a couple of times, it gets easier because it has less resistance. That's like healthy blood vessels that have lower resistance. We want flexible blood vessels, not stiff ones. Your cardiac output is your heart rate or how many times your heart beats per minute times your stroke volume, which is the amount of blood pumped by your heart each minute. So anything that increases your heart rate, volume of blood, or vascular resistance will increase blood pressure. As Dr. Ben Bickman outlines in his book, Why We Get Sick, there are five reasons why insulin resistance directly increases blood pressure. First, insulin increases blood pressure through raising the hormone aldosterone. Aldosterone is a hormone that increases salt and thus water retention in your body. Insulin increases aldosterone. Aldosterone increases salt in the blood. This increases water in the blood to balance out the salt. And this increase in water increases blood volume. And the increase in blood volume increases blood pressure. Think about when you go out for Mexican food and have a bunch of chips, or when you have a big meal and cake like at a wedding. You likely feel a little bloated and puffy the next day. That's because those carbs from the chips and the sugar raise insulin, and insulin raises aldosterone, which causes fluid retention. The second way insulin resistance raises blood pressure is by thickening blood vessels. Too much insulin leads to excessive growth of the innermost layer of the blood vessel wall. Over time, this thickening leads to increased vessel resistance. Increased blood vessel resistance will increase blood pressure. Think of the difference between stretching a thick rubber band and a thin one. It takes greater effort to stretch the thick elastic than the thin. So we want thin, healthy, pliable blood vessels. Insulin resistance also raises blood pressure by reducing the blood vessel's ability to dilate or open up. In healthy cells, insulin activates the production of nitrous oxide in endothelial cells. If endothelial cells become resistant to insulin, this effect diminishes. So there is less opening of the blood vessels and this increases vessel resistance and blood pressure. Think of the difference between breathing through a small straw and a big straw. The small straw has a narrowed opening and requires increased pressure from you. This is like the endothelial cells that are insulin resistant because they can't expand as well. The larger straw has a larger opening, so requires less pressure from you. This is like cells that are still sensitive to insulin. They can expand and reduce the pressure leading to lower blood pressure. The fourth way that insulin raises blood pressure is through increased cortisol. 
Insulin resistance is a stressful state on the body and it's an inflammatory state as well. Inflammation and stress are not bad things and we need them to survive. But when they're chronic, they aren't healthy. Now the elevated insulin from insulin resistance raises cortisol. This is a hormone involved in your fight or flight response. So it's like you're always in a mild state of stress, which raises blood pressure. The last way insulin resistance causes high blood pressure is through a signal to the liver to produce more small, dense LDL particles. These are more atherogenic than larger LDL particles. And I explain that more in this video that we'll link to on the end screen so you can watch that next. Finally, insulin resistance increases inflammation in the blood vessels. This inflammation drives the process of atherosclerosis, and that's the buildup of plaque inside the blood vessel. Think about the sludge that gets built up over time in your kitchen sink pipes. Your sink used to drain quickly, but over time, gross stuff clogs the pipes and the water drains slower. That's like what happens when you have plaque in your arteries. This plaque is what can get dislodged and cause serious problems, such as a heart attack or stroke. It can also keep growing to the point where your artery is almost or completely blocked. In this case, you'll experience a heart attack or chest pain if you don't catch it early enough and get a stent or bypass. When you start to view each lifestyle choice through the lens of how will this affect my insulin and inflammation, choices become clearer. Eat a low sugar, low refined carb, high protein, fiber, and healthy fat diet. Move your body, prioritize resistance training, sleep and manage your stress. This is how we live a low insulin and inflammation lifestyle. Have you started to incorporate any of these lifestyle changes? And if so, have you noticed a change in your blood pressure? Let us know in the comments. If you need help with this, check out our coaching options here. And be sure to watch this video next about the difference between LDLC and LDLP, and this video explaining insulin resistance in less than five minutes. Now, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more on lowering insulin resistance for long-term weight loss and better health.